Okay, so let's talk about parabolas and we're going to talk about a vertex form. So um, let's graph some parabolas. So, you know, I'm on the graph. I know there are some old graphs in here. So let me get rid of them. Tab, up, up, uh, control, delete, enter. And then let me go to tab F2. Let me get that out of here. Control, delete, um, enter. Okay. So let's start over with tab f the first function. So I'm going to put the parabola on f of 1 of x or y. You recognize it as y. Let's see, x squared, x squared, um, let's see, plus 8x minus 4, plus 8x. Um, I think I have to do time. Let's see if I can do it without the, the times. Plus 4, hit enter. Nice. Um, let's zoom out because I'm, I want to find that turning point. Menu. Um, window zoom, um, let's zoom fit, nice. So it's pretty big, um, my graph had to go, oh, like see down there, negative 31.6. Um, so let me change the window to acknowledge that because I want, I want it to look a little better. Um, window zoom, window settings, um, my min, x min and my x min are fine. My y min, let's just change that to negative 35. And let's just change my y max to 10. Nice. Okay. Well, what's the, the minimum? Well, I can use the GDC to easily find that minimum point, the turning point. I might do menu, analyze graph. It's a minimum. Okay, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Nice, so my minimum is, is negative four, negative 12. Now, here's the interesting thing. Um, if I put it in the, so let's write that down. So the turning point was negative four, negative 12. That negative four, that's actually the axis of symmetry. And negative four, negative 12 is the turning point. Well, I'm gonna do something a little different. Let's put in another function. Let's write this function a little bit differently. Maybe it's a different function at all. Well, uh, no, I apologize. So f of x equals, let's see, open parentheses, um, x plus 4, close parentheses, squared, um, minus 12. So let's see if we get a totally different function. Well, it turns out we got the same exact function. Well, let me move that down a little bit with my hand. Yeah, there it's that's it's the same exact function. That's interesting. Not a coincidence. Notice how when I put the negative four in there, it became positive four, but the negative twelve stayed negative twelve. Let's try another example. How about um x squared minus six x plus eight? So let's go back to tab menu. Oh, sorry. Let's go to tab. I apologize, escape. Tab. Let's go up. Um, let's delete those. Well, yeah, let's delete them out and hit enter. And then let's go back down, control, delete, enter. And as I said, oh, okay, what was the function again? What was the function again? It was x squared minus 6x plus 8. Let's see, x squared minus 6x plus 8. Enter. Okay. Um, now let's get this is the new function. Let's let's find the uh, the turning point there. So once again, menu, analyze graph, or another minimum. Um, we want graph one. So to a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Interesting. So in this new parabola, the turning point is negative. Uh, it's positive three one negative one. Let's write that down. Well, let's go to the second function. You you probably see where I'm going with this tab. Oops. Let's say escape. Up oh, back to graph. Tab. Tab up there. Let's change the numbers around. Um, instead of plus four, I'm going to do minus three. And obviously, instead of minus 12, I'm going to do minus one. Let's take that two out, delete. 
Let's see what happens. Oh, we got the same function before. We got the same function. So it's interesting that we can say that x squared minus 6x plus 8 is, is the same exact parabola as x minus 3 squared minus 1. Once again, notice the turning the, the 3 was positive, but we wrote x minus 3, and the y value was negative 1 and stayed negative 1. Let's try another example. Let's do it with a parabola that um, whose equation is a little different than we've been working on. So let's go to tab, go up. Let's delete this out. Oh, sorry. Control, delete, enter. Now, hmm. Let's see. Control, delete, enter. Sorry. Delete, 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 delete. Some of you have to just delete it and hit enter. And then let's take out the second, let's try to take out the second equation um, using control, delete. Enter. Okay, that's gone. Let's go back to so let's go back to F1 tab. And the third equation is 2x squared minus 20x plus 9. 2 times x squared minus 20 times x plus 9. Enter. Okay. Um, let's, uh, well, let me move my face out of the way and, uh, let's change, let's go to menu, window, I'm going to lower my, uh, window settings, I'm going to lower my Y value, my Y min, let's make it negative 50. Enter. Okay. Now we can see it better. Um, let's find that minimum. So let's see, um, menu, analyze graph. Minimum, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Ah, five negative forty-one. Let's uh, let's write that down. Five negative forty-one. Now I'm going to show you. Let's put this new equation in. Let's see. Tab. We're going to do. Ready? We're going to do two times. Open parentheses. X minus five close parentheses, squared, minus 41. It turns out, as you can guess, we have the same equation. So what today's lesson is going to be is explaining how we can manual. So um, we're going to talk about how we can write parabolas in, ver this is called vertex form. So if you notice in all three cases, we use the turning point to write an equation of the parabola whose original form was standard form. Thank you. Okay, what we saw in the video is that we can represent the parabola of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, which is known as the standard form. Um, we can represent it using the equation y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. This is known as vertex, vertex form, where um, a, uh, I'm sorry, where HK is the turning point. Okay, and we then technically can say that a, x equals h is the axis of symmetry. Can you see me over there? Yeah. The axis of symmetry. So if you take up any uh, parabola, for example, y equals x squared um, plus 8x plus 2, um, you can either do it on the GDC, find the minimum point, and then take the turning point and put it in the equation, remembering that if h is positive, it's minus that value. And if h is, neg h is negative, it's plus that value. Let's take an example here. So I know that my a is 1, my b is 8, my c is 2, my axis of symmetry has the equation of x equals negative 8 over 2 times 1, which is negative 4. I found the y by plugging the negative 4 back in the original equation, negative 4 squared plus 8 times negative 4 plus 2 
32 minus 16 is negative 16, negative 14, and therefore the equation allows me to write it as y equals x plus 4 squared minus 14. You can check in the graphing, you can check in your graphing calculator or Desmos if you don't have a graphing calculator that these two parabola, these two equations represent the same parabola. Let's try another example. How about y equals um, x squared minus uh, 10x plus 5. Okay, so once again, first of all, find the axis of symmetry. Well, first of all, find your um, coefficients. My a is 1, my b is negative 10, and my c is 5. Find your axis of symmetry. Once again, either you can do this in the calculator or you can do this by hand. Oops, sorry. Um, we know that the axis of symmetry, x equals negative negative 10 over 2 times 1, which is 5. Coincidence. Find the y value of the turning points. y is equal to 5 squared minus 10 times 5 equals plus 5. And so we get uh, negative 50 minus 25 is negative 25, plus 5 is negative 20, and therefore we can rewrite the equation in standard form in vertex form as y equals x minus 5. Remember, if the x is positive, then it's minus that value, squared minus 20. Let's try one with... Um, with a 2 in front. Just to make this clear, how about y equals 3x squared minus 12x plus 5? It may look a little, a little confusing, but once again, all we need to do is to write it in vertex form is to find the turning point. And uh, yeah, to find the turning point. Let's find the axis. First of all, let's identify our, um, our very uh, coefficients. a equals 3 b equals negative 12, and c equals 5. The axis of symmetry is x equals negative negative 12 over 2 times 3. Now 12 divided by 6 is 2. And now we can find the y value of the turning point. y equals 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 5. If you have a calculator, Plug it in exactly. Remember, put the parentheses around the two. If you're not using a calculator, well, let's think about this. Order of operations, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 minus 24 plus 5. Negative 12 plus 5, negative 7. Now let's write this from standard form into vertex form. Remember, remember a vertex form. Can you see it over here? There you go. Remember, it's the it's the A in front of here, right? So let's, let's get back. Final answer: Y equals three. Open parentheses. Basic your basic H and your K. X minus two squared minus seven. And that's how we go from uh, standard form to vertex form. Either you're using the GDC. Or are you doing it by hand? Now let me show you an advanced technique. You will not need you will not be asked this, but it now, it's called completing the square. Let's see if I can get it. Perfect. Here we go. This method is called completing the square. And it once it, once you follow these steps, um, you can quickly uh, you know write it in vertex form. Now you can do this with quadratic equations or you can do it with parabolas. So if you do it with a quadratic equation, it just makes your life easier to solve for x. And if you do it with a parabola, it's easier to find the vertex. So let's take our examples, actually. Let's start with y equals x squared plus 8x plus 2. So once again, this is uh, advanced. Write your own rules down. Step one, I'm going to rewrite this so that my 2 is a way from my x squared and my 8x. Step two, take the 8, divide it by 2, and square it. Well, 8 divided by 2 is 4, squared is 16. Well, I would love to have a 16 here because 
I'll show you in a second, but I have to maintain the balance. So if I add a 16, I better subtract the 16. Okay, now for those of you, okay, step three. For those of you who have been practicing factoring your quadratics, you've gone through the factor, the factor madness, you've gone through this, we recognize that this is a perfect square. X plus four squared minus 14. If you recall from before, the turning point was in fact negative four, negative 14. Let's try another problem. Um, y equals x squared minus 10x plus 5. So the first step was move that 5 a little bit over. y equals x squared minus 10x plus 5. Step 2, take the negative 10, divide that by 2, and square it. Negative 10 divided by 2 is 5, squared is 25. So I need a 25 here but I have to maintain the balance. If I add a 25, I better subtract the 25. Okay, last step. Well, if you notice here, because you've been practicing factoring quadratic uh, trinomials, you immediately recognize this as x minus five squared minus 20. And then you say, oh, you know what, Mr. Allen, that was the answer we got over here. The turning point is five, negative 20. Nice. Let's look at the last example. The last example we got over. Do we have room on the board? Yeah. The last example was y equals 3x squared minus 12x plus 5. Um, what should we do? What do you think? Well, I'm going to... I, I, I like the step. My suggestion to you is, once again, it's an advanced thing. First of all, I divide out that three, but don't cancel it. So divide everything by three. We'll see what I'm gonna do in a second. So I have y over three is equal to x squared minus four x. Put that five over three all the way to the end. We'll take care of it at the end. So. I have x squared minus four. You say, oh, you know what? I can complete the square. Take the negative four, divide by two, and square it. Well, it takes us back to four. Negative four divided by two is two, squared is four. If I add a four, I better subtract a four. I have to maintain the balance, so adding by zero really doesn't affect the equation. If you've been practicing your, factor, your factoring madness, you know that this is x minus two squared, Minus, well, there's fractions there, but you know what? 4 is actually 12 divided by 3. Let's rewrite that. So it turns out that I actually have negative 7 over 3. And this was y over 3 equals this. So that looks weird. That doesn't look like the, we, the answer we had in the last problem. Um, but you say, oh, wait a minute. Let me, I, the equation was in the form of y equals. How do we undo division? Well, just multiply. So if we multiply everything by 3, we end up with y equals 3 times this thing minus 7. And when we see, the turning point is 2, negative 7. Um, another way we could use, once again, this is really advanced. I, I wouldn't even teach this to my 10, to my SLs, maybe my HL, or, but watch. Another way is y equals 3, open parentheses, x squared minus 4x, leave a big bracket over here, and put the 5 on the outside. Once again, I factored out a 3 here. Well, I have my x squared minus 4x. I know negative 4 divided by 2 is 2, is negative 2, squared is positive 4. Add a 4, subtract a 4. Well, I have y equals 3 times x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 12 plus 5. I'll leave it to you to figure out where did that negative 12 come from? Final step y equals 3, 
x minus 2 squared minus 7. Um, just little tricks, just little things to pay attention to if you're going to use this method. It's not a coincidence that this ends up here. It's not a coincidence that negative 5 ends up here. And it's not a coincidence that the negative 2 ends up here. It's a way to help you. Good.